This is part five of a nine-part video series showing how to rebuild a Toyota solid front axle. It can apply to 1979 through 1985 Toyota pickups and 1984 and 85 Toyota 4Runners. Additionally, these instructions could also loosely apply to many Toyota Land Cruisers. In today's presentation, we will be showing how to recondition the hub and install a new rotor. The tools, parts, and supplies needed for reconditioning the hub are the inner and outer bearings and races, 3 8 impact wrench with a 14 millimeter deep socket, brass hammer, dead blow hammer, ball peen hammer, round punch, utility knife, four 2x4 blocks of wood, masking tape, fast dry enamel paint, penetrating oil, a bead blast machine, and a disc sander. The first step is to remove these six studs. Turn the hub rotor assembly over and pound out the studs using a ball peen hammer. Once all the studs have been removed, apply penetrating oil to these two rotor attaching bolts. Now remove these bolts using a 14 millimeter impact socket and an impact wrench. Separate the hub from the rotor using a dead blow hammer. Remove the outside bearing race from the hub by striking the race in the areas shown here using a hammer and punch. Continue striking the race in the two places shown, alternating back and forth until the race comes out. Now remove the inner bearing and seal by turning the hub over and positioning it on blocks of wood as shown. Strike the inner bearing using a hammer and punch until the bearing and seal drop out. Reposition the hub as before and remove the inner bearing race in the same method used on the outer bearing race. Be sure to keep both the inner and outer bearing races, they will be needed later. Using a cloth, wipe out the hub. Place the hub in the bead blast machine. Blast away any paint, rust or debris from the outside and inside of the hub. Carefully inspect the hub to ensure that it is completely clean. Place the hub on a workbench and remove the locking hub studs using vice grip pliers. Prepare the hub for painting by masking the areas where paint should not be applied. Mask the area of the hub where the seal contacts the hub as shown here. Also mask the area where the locking hub attaches to the hub. Trim the excess tape using a utility knife. Mask any remaining areas that should not be exposed to paint. Apply several coats of a fast drying enamel paint. The next step in our hub reconditioning is to install the new bearing races. Unless you have the proper tool to drive in bearing races, the next best thing is to use the old races and a brass hammer. Reduce the outside diameter of the old races using a disc sander.
Be sure to reduce the diameter enough to where the old race will not become jammed in the hub as you use it to drive in the new race. Beginning with the outside bearing, place the new race in the hub as shown. Position the old race against the new race upside down from its original orientation. Drive in the new race by striking the old race with a brass hammer. Be sure the race is going in squarely. Once the old race becomes flush with the housing, continue the installation with a punch and hammer. Use extra caution here so as not to damage the hub. Continue driving the race until it fits all the way down in the hub housing. There should be no gap between the race and the hub housing as shown here. Flip the hub over and place it on a block of wood. Position the inside bearing race in the hub. Start the installation of the race by tapping it with a brass hammer. Ensure that it fits in the hub squarely. Once you're sure the race is going in squarely, place the old race against it and continue driving the race, alternating sides until it seats all the way down in the hub. Be careful not to strike the hub itself. Ensure that there's no gap between the race and the hub. Next we'll show the installation of the locking hub studs. The tools and supplies needed for this job are a cordless impact driver with a 3 8 drive adapter, a 3 8 ratchet, an extension with a 13 mm deep socket, two 13 mm combination wrenches, six studs and nuts, and blue thread locker. Note that the threads on the stud are longer on one end than the other. It's important that the longer threads are installed in the hub. Apply blue thread locker to the long threaded end of the stud. Start the stud into the hub. Tighten the studs using the double nut method. Install the bottom nut. Then install the top nut. Tighten the two nuts against each other using the 13 mm wrenches. Now that the two nuts are locked together, tighten the stud by turning the top nut in a clockwise direction using the 13 mm socket on the impact driver. Once the stud is tight, loosen and remove both nuts. Install the other five studs in the same way. Be sure to wipe away any excess thread locker. Next we'll show the installation of the rotor on the hub. The tools and parts needed are a torque wrench, a ratchet and extension with a 14 mm socket, a brake rotor, the hub, and two bolts and lock washers. It's important to note here that some rotors are side specific. For example, this rotor is designed to run on the right or passenger side of the vehicle. Simply be sure that whatever hub this rotor is attached to is installed on the right or passenger side of the vehicle. Position the rotor on the hub and align the holes. Place lock washers on the bolts and install them through the rotor in the hub. Snug the bolts, then torque them to 38 foot-pounds. The last step is to install the wheel studs. The tools and parts needed for this job are a ball peed hammer, a punch, six studs and a hub rotor assembly. Although not required for this job, it will go a lot easier if you have a hydraulic press and a six lug steel Toyota rim. 
Place all the studs in the hub rotor assembly as shown. Start each stud with a punch and hammer. It's possible to seat the studs all the way with a punch and hammer. However, because it's easier, we will also demonstrate how to use a hydraulic press. Place a six lug Toyota rim on the hydraulic press as shown. Place the hub rotor assembly on the rim, aligning the studs with the holes. Using the hydraulic press, force the stud into the hub rotor assembly until it completely seats. Once seated, release the press and press in the other five studs in the same way. We remind you that all the parts and supplies required to rebuild this hub rotor assembly can be purchased through our website at www.lowrangeoffroad.com or by calling 801-805-6644.